Now we're going to talk about what the heck we're going to do with 14 t-shirts per day. So I want to make sure that we have already gotten our graphs and we pretty much put our graphs on, pretty much just replicated it here. So suppose that a firm wants to make 14 t-shirts per day. So what we actually want to do is what we did here, what I did here. We, I drew a line from 14 up, straight up. And when I draw it straight up, it will obviously intersect with all these other average total cost curves. And this actually tells us something. What it tells us is that um, when we want to make 14 t-shirts per day, it will cost us $8 per t-shirt on average total cost curve 1. It will cost us $7.50 on average total cost curve two. It will cost us again eight dollars on average total cost curve three and it will cost us ten dollars on average total cost curve four. Just because uh, the horse the vertical line that I drew from 14 intersected with these ATC curves because you can see that at, at ATC curve four uh, when it intersects the the pink line uh, it's actually ten dollars for a uh, for 14 t-shirts per day at ATC3 and ATC1 it's eight dollars and when it intersects ATC2 um, we get 750 so the cheapest option obviously is uh, when we're producing on ATC curve 2 when we if you want to make 14 t-shirts per day so the least cost way of producing 14 t-shirts per day is on ATC curve 2 and that is when we have uh, a plan with two knitting machines. So the long run average variable cost or the average cost curve, it is the relationship between the lowest attainable average total cost and output when uh, both plants and labors are varied. That actually made no sense so let me read it again. It is the relationship between the lowest attainable average total cost and output when both plant and labor are varied. That does not make any sense. So, so okay, so it's, oh, I know what I was talking about. So the long run average cost curve is the relationship between the lowest attainable average total cost and output when both the plant and labor are varied. That's what I want to talk about. The long run average cost curve is a planning curve that tells the firm uh, the plant that minimizes the cost of producing a given output range. So for example, at 14 t-shirts per day, the best plant for minimizing the production cost is plant 2, as we've seen here. And once a firm has chosen its plant, the firm incurs the cost corresponding to the ATC curve for that plant. So what we have here is something that illustrates our long run average cost curve. And you can see that if we want to produce something at less than 14 t-shirts per day, say uh, 12 t-shirts per day, then the best, the best option is to go with a plant with only one knitting machine and therefore respectively uh, ATC curve 1 because at 12 we would be choosing our least cost way of producing t-shirts for uh, if you want to pr produce more than 14 or bet between tw uh, 13 which is above this red line and 19 I guess then the best option would just be just produce 14 t-shirts per day because we found that that is actually the, mo op the most optimal amount of t-shirts we should make at the cost that we will incur. At a point where we want to uh, make more than 19 t-shirts and less than uh, or more than more than I guess 18 t-shirts and less than uh, less than 23 t-shirts you would want to actually uh, make 19 t-shirts because it is at the the it is the least cost way for is the least cost way for producing the optimal amount of t-shirts for the given cost of having three knitting machines and the same idea for uh, four knitting machines. 
So that's that. Let's talk a little bit about economies and this economies of set of scale. Economies of scale is are pretty much features of a firm's technology that leads to falling long run average costs as output increases. This economies of scale are features of a firm's technology that lead to rising long run average costs as output increases and constant returns to scale is features of a firm's technology leading to constant uh, long, uh, long, run, long run average cost as output increases. And this pretty much illustrates our economies and economies of scale from this point to that point. That is economies of scale because the firm's technology leads to a falling long run average cost which is this bolded blue line as output increases as output increases from uh, 0 to the, to 15 that is the point of economies of scale because uh, the our average cost actually falls as our output increases and from that from the from point 15 onwards that is actually this economies of scale because as the the firm's technology is such that as output increases, uh, the long run average cost actually rises. And that is the difference between this economy scale and economies of scale. Economy of scale as output increases, the cost goes down. This economy of scale as output uh, increases, the cost goes up. And finally, we're at the end and we're talking about minimum efficient scale. So economies of scale is experienced up to some output level and this is represented by this black dot here this is the sum output level beyond that output level it moves into constant returns to scale or as we can see in this graph it actually moved to this economies of scale the minimum efficient scale is the smallest quantity of output where the LRAC uh, reaches its lowest level so actually this here, this black dot here, is actually our minimum efficient scale. If the LRAC is U-shaped, then the minimum point identifies the minimum uh, minimum efficient scale output level. So here is an example of that. If our if our uh, uh, if our curve was actually not this shape but U-shaped, then obviously the minimum point would be uh, here at the lowest point on the U. And that's all I want to talk about. This is the end of this chapter. We have one more chapter to go. Uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next chapter. Uh, thanks for watching.